I just want to go through the highlights of the things that I found as I went through these oaths. And um, I was just comparing it originally the Jesuits, the Knights of Malta, and Bethel. And um, it came out. And I do want to say from the beginning, these words are not said by graduates of Bethel School of Supernatural Ministry. Um, but the knighting ceremony where they actually take swords and they lay, you know, like the, they're kneeling, they, they knight them, is very similar to the knighting process of the Knights of Malta, which um, I'm going to be sharing with you the oath that they take and members of the New Apostolic Reformation are members of, the, they have been knighted as Knights of Malta, which is in connection with the Jesuits and Illuminati and all these things that we're talking about today. So here are some highlights from the Jesuit extreme oath of induction. So on either side stands a monk, one of whom holds a banner of yellow and white, which are the papal colors, and the other a black banner with a dagger and red cross above a skull and crossbones with the word I-N-R-I. -I. And below them the words Eustum Nicar Regis Impius, the meaning of which is it is just to exterminate or annihilate impious or heretical kings, governments, or rulers. So this is a very, uh, if you use the term jihadic type of movement, uh, they are there as warriors, so to speak, of the uh, Catholic Church, okay? So the superior says, my son here, to four, you have been taught to act as assembler among Roman Catholics to be a Roman Catholic and to be a spy even among your own brethren, to believe no man, to trust no man, among the reformers to be a reformer, among the Huguenots to be a Huguenot, among the Calvinists to be a Calvinist, among the Protestants generally to be a Protestant and obtaining their confidence to seek even to preach from their pulpits, and to denounce with all the vehemence in your nature our holy religion and the Pope, and even to descend so low as to become a Jew among Jews, that you might be enabled to gather together all information for the benefit of your order as a faithful soldier to the Pope. Wow. So they are called upon to lie for the Lord. They are called upon to uh, publicly even denounce the Roman Catholic Church and the Pope if it means that they can gather information and gather trust so that they can go back and report to their one only allegiance, the Roman Catholic Church. You have been taught to insidiously plant the seeds of jealousy and hatred between communities, provinces, states that were at peace and incite them to deeds of blood, involving them in war with each other and to create revolutions and civil wars in countries that were independent and prosperous, cultivating the arts and the sciences and enjoying the blessings of peace. <coughs> to take sides with the combatants and to act secretly with your brother Jesuit, who might be engaged on the other side, but openly opposed to that which you might be connected, only that the church might be the gainer in the end and the conditions fixed in the treaties for peace that the end justifies the means. The end justifies the means. Cause war, cause dissensions, cause havoc, cause false teachings, cause disunity. All because the end justifies the means. You have been taught your duty as a spy to gather all statistics, facts, and information in your power from every source to ingratiate yourself into the confidence of the family circle of Protestants and heretics of every class and character, as well as that of the merchant, the banker, the lawyer, among the schools and universities and parliaments and legislatures and judiciaries and council of the state to be all things to all men for the Pope's sake, whose servants we are unto death. The extreme oath of the Jesuits, I furthermore promise and declare that I will, when opportunity present, make and wage relentless war secretly or openly against all heretics, Protestants, liberals, as I am directed to do to exp expurgate and exterminate them from the face of the whole earth, and that I will spare neither age, sex, or condition, that I will hang, waste, boil, flay, strangle, and bury alive these infamous heretics, rip up the stomachs and wounds of their women, and crush their infants' heads against the walls in order to annihilate forever their execrable race, that when the same cannot be done openly, I will secretly use the poison cup, the strangulating cord, the steel of the poniard, or the leaden bullet, regardless of horror, honor, rank, 
or authority in the person or persons, whatever may be their condition in life, either public or private, as I at any time may be directed to do so by any agent or the Pope or superior the Brotherhood of the Holy Faith of the Society of Jesus. Wow. Should I prove false or weaken in my determination, may my brethren and fellow soldiers of the militia of the Pope cut off my hands and my feet, my throat from ear to ear, my belly open and sulfur burn therein, and all the punishment that can be inflicted upon me on earth, and my soul be tortured by demons in an eternal hell forever. This is the point in which I started to see a connection to things that used to be part of the LDS a temple endowment ceremony, and is, it was called the blood oath, okay? And so if any of you have been a part of that or went through that when you were an LDS person, you know what I'm talking about. Now they have actually taken that part out of the ceremony, and even in the, the part where, you know, the devil used to look at the screen and say, if any of you go back on your commitment that you make today, then you are mine, and I will torture you forever kind of thing. So, going on, in the first place, you are a brother Jesuit, will, will with and another mutually make the ordinary sign of the cross as any ordinary Roman Catholic would. Then one crossed his wrist, the palms of his hands open, and the other an answer crosses his feet, one above the other, the first points with forefinger, the right hand to the center of the palm of the left. The other with the forefinger of the left hand points to the center of the palm of the right. The first then, with his right hand, makes a circle around his head, touching it. The other then, with the forefinger of his left hand, touches the left side of his body, just below his heart. The first then, with his right hand, draws it across the throat of the other, and then latter, then with a dagger down the stomach and abdomen of the first. And so the reason why I'm sharing this with you is because it's a follow-up to what I talked about. I alluded to the oaths in my previous video, but the connection is not that Bethel is making people say these words. The LDS Church used to, okay? And the LDS Church is well known that they are a copy in their Temple Endowment Ceremony of the Masonic Ceremony, and then the Masonic Ceremony obviously has its connections to this Jesuit and um, all of these other mysterious groups, Jesuit, Knights of Malta, Illuminati, all of that stuff, okay? So the connection with Bethel is this, that Rick Joyner is a Knight of Malta. And it's very clear, just like Joseph Smith got his inspiration from the Masonic ceremony for his Temple Endowment ceremony, it seems pretty obvious that Rick Joyner being a knight of Malta, which is Roman Catholic affiliated, okay, Jesuit, Roman Catholic affiliated, that he got his inspiration from that for the whole knighting ceremony that you see at Bethel School of Supernatural Ministry. And one has to wonder when there were the words that you should teach in their pulpits and you should say what you need to say. You should spy on your brother. You should create this movement and especially seeing the connection between the Seven Mountain Mandate and the way that the Jesuits planned the Counter-Reformation tactic was carried out. And you see that they were commanded to kill kings and leaders and all of these things that disagreed with the Roman Catholic Church. And so I want to know what you think of all this, if you have insights or questions into this, or if you have other sources that I should check out, then let me know in the comments down below. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. Give us a thumbs up on the content if you like it for today. Share this with you with others who are interested in cults and how to share the gospel with them. Stay tuned for tomorrow's video where we're going to be answering a question that came to me or a statement, a challenge in which somebody said that Jesus paid for sin, but not our sins. Is that correct? Or does the Bible teach that Jesus paid for our sins? So stay tuned. Come back tomorrow for that. And until next time, may God's grace be with you.